No bite are here. Oh, so it's gone in! We've done it again! Somersaults from Wilbox! Falkirk have scored in stoppage time! And it's advantage to the championship side. Welcome to Sports Scene, the Premiership Playoff Final Round 2. Kilmarnock and Falkirk grappling for a place in the top flight next season. Which side would land the knockout blow? Full highlights coming up, plus no holds barred punditry as well. With us in the studio tonight, Pat Nevin and Tom English. Later, we'll also look back at a memorable Scottish Cup final. But first, straight to Rugby Park. Falkirk 1-0 up from the first leg. The entire seasons of both sides about to be defined. Commentary comes from Craig Patterson and Liam McLeod. Well, Lee Clark has brought Josh McGuinness back into his starting lineup, having missed the first leg because of a hamstring problem. Will that be a risk? It's a big afternoon for 18-year-old Greg Taylor, who makes just his second start with Lee Hodson on his more natural right side. Peter Houston has gone slightly more pragmatic today with Tom Tywo recalled in place of the benched Blair Alston. That aside, it's a now familiar looking Falkirk team with Baird and McHugh continuing up front. Goalkeeper Danny Rogers plays his last game before returning to parent club Aberdeen. The referee's Willie Collum, who's off to this summer's European Championship finals after this. It's just his second visit of the season to Rugby Park. Seldom have the stakes been higher. Volker kickoff, shooting right to left in the dark navy, going towards the Moffat stand. Game number 1052 of the season across all of Scotland's domestic competitions. The final matter to be resolved, who will be team 12 in the Premiership and team 10 in the Championship? First chance for Josh McGuinness in the channel. It's a good play by McGuinness. Big chance early on! And a massive goal early on as well from Greg Kilty! Two minutes in, and Kilmarnock have wiped out the Falkirk advantage! Well, it's a dream start for Kilmarnock, and Josh McGuinness back in the side, and you can see why. He gets the ball, he goes at Leahy, he has got pace, he gets to near the byline, cuts it back, and Kelty one touch and then a drill into the back of the net. It's a great start for Kilmarnock, and it's a really well-worked goal. McGuinness plays his part, Kelty in the right place to finish. Falkirk scored late in the first leg, Kilmarnock scored early in the second leg, and it is 1-1 on the aggregate scoreline. What a positive start from the home team. Tybo. For Blair Alston today, it was a big call from Peter Houston. He's Bob McHugh, he wins the free kick. Well, first chance for Falkirk to put the Kelly defence under pressure. It's one of these areas where it'll take something special to beat the goalkeeper. Mark Kerr over the free kick. Half away by Ashcroft. Here's Volks. The wall balls, the fancy the long throw. You know, every time they get in the final third, Falkirk have a method of putting you under pressure. And it's a real weapon when it comes. This is Tywo! Well, that would have been some response. Tywo strikes this well. Not sure if it's actually going in, but uh, defensively, Kilmarnock well, just get the job done. Boyd up against Leahy. Kilmarnock have their own long throw weapon in the shape of Josh McGuinness. He's gone short though, here's Hodson. Falkirk standing off a bit here, it's not a bad ball either! They've turned this right round! Addison puts Kilmarnock in front and again, and we haven't even played eight minutes! What a salvage job! Well, Falkirk completely switch off, they wait for the long throw, nobody comes across, they take it short, Craig Sybil doesn't know, go to the ball, stay with McGuinness, 
It's a great ball to the back post, then it's anybody's, and it falls perfectly for Miles Harrison. From about six inches, he smashes it into the back of the net, but poor defensively from Falkirk. Kilmarnock, it's an absolute dream from them. Good ball in. It's going, that could go anywhere, but it falls to Miles Addison, who's in the right place at the right time. Kilmarnock could seldom have dreamt of a better start to the second leg. It has been stunning, their reaction. Aaron Muirhead was unlucky, but Addison was there to score his first goal for Kelly. Chance here, though, for Falkirk with their first corner of the afternoon. Oh, shout for a penalty there from the Falkirk supporters up the other end of the ground. Their manager clearly agrees with them. And it was Miles Addison had the hand up. The referee maybe doesn't see it or doesn't see enough contact, but it's a dangerous thing to do defensively in the box. McGuinness. Corner. Now an opportunity for Kelly to load the box. Slater's corner kick. Decker resists the temptation to shoot. This is Slater! He falls into the arms of Danny Rogers. Struggling defensively just now, Falk. You see the ball comes out, he's got so much time, nobody comes and confronts him, allows him to shoot, and... Oh, they're fortunate there. Volks. Blocked by Dicker. Not a good touch from Kerr. Dicker slips it through to Kilty. Options left and right. Obadiah and Boyd. Boyd wanted it. Kilty couldn't make his mind up and eventually runs into a cul de sac. Play on for Falkirk here with Baird. There was a foul on McCracken in the build up to this. Leahy to Baird. To Kerr. It's only half away. It's back with Beard here. Sibold! Big chance, and it would have been spectacular. Well, if he strikes this properly, there's a real chance this ends up in the back of the net. It's a lovely ball, and it's behind him. He's got to go for the scissor kick, but he doesn't get enough on it. Good technique, but you can see they have no great power. Still got it, Lee Clark. He certainly kicks every ball, doesn't he? He's one of the most animated managers you're ever going to see. It's half-time at Rugby Park, and the Killy players are receiving a standing ovation. Greg Kilty cancelling out that late first leg goal from Will Volks. Miles Addison adding to it not too long afterwards, and Kilmarnock from 1-0 down in aggregate, were 2-1 up inside eight minutes of the second leg. Michael Johnston happy, and little wonder, so two of the home supporters at half-time in the second leg. It is Kilmarnock 2, Falkirk 0. It is 2-1 Kelly in aggregate. We're 45 minutes away from finding out who will make up the Premiership. The 166th meeting between the clubs. Well, this is certainly the most important meeting since 2010 and that relegation scrap at the end of that campaign. And Falkirk know, when they look back at their season, they've only failed to score on five occasions. Oh, last minute Falkirk as they become at the end of the season, and that's why it'll get edgy later in the game. And I think that's why Lee Clark wants his players to push on, score again and give themselves a cushion. And there's a foul there by Mark Kerr on Greg Kelty. And it's presented Kilmarnock with a good opportunity. Yeah, it's down to quality, and Craig Slater certainly has plenty of it. Slater with this free kick. It's a good one! Great save, Rogers, and then over the bar from Obadiah. What a chance! That's incredible, it comes at him quick. It's a great ball, it's a lovely flick header, it's a decent save. And you think if it bounces off him, it has got to end up in the back of the net. And well, amazingly. How important is that going to prove to be? It was Ashcroft with the initial effort. Obadiah was surprised it reached him. 
That's an hour play, just about, of the second leg of the SPFL Premiership playoff final. Kelly 2 nothing up, 2-1 up in aggregate. This is Greg Kilty. It's easy for Rodgers. But they're making opportunities, Kilmarnock. It's similar to Thursday. Falkirk are not creating nearly as much as their hosts. No, well, Kelly are starting just to win 50-50s in the middle of the park there, and it's not a great effort from Greg Kilty, but it shows a bit of confidence. Here comes over Daye, who has got pitch to work in. Taking on Muirhead. Back it comes, big chance! Big goal for Kilmarnock! That might be the goal that keeps Kelly in the top right! Kilty does it again! His second, Kilmarnock's third, and it is a long, long way back now for the Bears. And Obadiah is showing the great side of his game when he gets that room. He knows he's got pace, he knows he can take the player on, slows it up, then puts on the afterburner, the cutback, and Kilty, as he did in the first half, he gets it, goes through the goalkeeper, but if you hit target, there's a great chance the ball ends up in the back of the net. Finish Kilty, great play from Topi Obadai. He's played the ball on an absolute play for his teammate, and he hasn't disappointed. The back of the net now. Kilmarnock are in the box seat, 3 0 ahead, and now giving themselves that cushion to defend. Kilmarnock have saved their best performance of the season, arguably, when the stakes were at their highest. There's Alston, back for Kerr, to put back for Miller, and then McGuinness holds him off, and now Killy are on their bike. And looking to kill this stone dead. Josh McGuinness is here, and Chris Boyd's there for the top end! They are surely staying up now! Chris Boyd, who scored goals and plenty to keep them up two years ago, has surely done Falkirk in now. It's a glory day for Killy. That's a sensational break. When McGuinness gets the ball, Lee Miller has a, a little trip at him, but now it's two against two. How do you work it well? He goes on his own, then he's got the pace, and then he's got the composure to see Chris Boyd. He can't miss, and McGuinness absolutely lays it on a plate. And the great thing about McGuinness, 3 0 up, no thought about himself. Everything there for the team. The ball needed to get in the back of the net. He might have scored. Chris Boyd would definitely score. One of Scottish football's deadliest gunslingers who has won titles, cups, silverware aplenty but that will feel just as good to him Here's Muirhead There's a good dummy there by Miller He's back onto it Alston! McDonald spilt it but they couldn't take advantage and there's a free kick to Kilmarnock to take the pressure off Hippolyte was in the middle Oh, well, that was a chance, wasn't it? A good save by the goalkeeper as it Hudson gets the ball away. He's taking a crack as well. Good reactions, yeah. Great play from the fullback in a good position there. As soon as the goalkeeper makes a stop, he completes the clearance. He's taken a whack, but he's bothered, but he's more than willing to take that for the team. Guilty. He's knocked it through to O'Hara. There's only Lee back to defend it, and Boyd's up in support. It's O'Hara. Unusual position, really, for Mark O'Hara. Uh, I think he fancied one for himself. This boy had made up the ground. It's a good ball through, now he's got a decision. Do I go myself? You can see Chris Boyd getting there, can I slip up past him? Decides to try his luck, and it wasn't a great effort. This will be the biggest Kilmarnock celebration since they won the League Cup in 2012, under Kenny Shields. It was a glory day for them. We won't have any silverware to celebrate today, but it will feel like winning a trophy. Especially when you see how long it's taken for some clubs to get close to coming back up as McDonald misses out and Hippolyte turns it home. Surely it is too little, too late for Falkirk. I'm not sure that goal's going to be given. It is a free kick. It's not going to count. And that sums up Falkirk's afternoon.
Well, Jamie McDonald comes, he comes into traffic. And, you know, it does look like a foul. I think the referee had given the goal. I think he pointed to his assistant as if he had managed to get in his ear and say it was definitely a foul. And to be fair, it did look like a foul by Lee Miller. Arms up into eyes. Ah, he's grabbed the harm as well, yep. I think your goal was going to get the foul given for that. It's Lee Miller. It's been a fabulous performance from Paul Marmot. Jordan McKenzie. Halfway through the stoppage time here. He's looking to finish it all off. He's effort to be going for the far corner there, you know. It's his teammate that's blocked it, I think. I think it's because Boy made it again a wonderful run to get ahead of him, looking for a little threaded pass. Mackenzie was going for goal and smashed it off his teammate. And what a real feather in the cap for Lee Clark. We'll be wondering where this performance was for the last couple of months. He's only won two games up to today since replacing Gary Locke. His final minute of injury time here. The Kilmarnock supporters in the stand over on this near side, all on their feet pretty much, in anticipation of Willie Collum's final whistle. As Taylor, he's looked assured at left back in just a second start. Everyone looking at the watch. We mustn't forget the job that Peter Houston has done at Falkirk. We mustn't forget the season they have had. They lost fewer games than Rangers in the league, did Falkirk. Draws and not enough wins on the road have cost them. And again, it's away from home that they've been dealt a hammer blow. And Lee Clark has steered Kilmarnock to safety. 23 years of top flight football has been preserved. Once again, there's a pitch invasion, as we saw in the Scottish Cup final, as we saw here six years ago. Goals from Kilty Addison, Kilty again, and from Chris Boyd, ensuring that Kilmarnock will be playing Premiership football next season. Falkirk are left broken-hearted in Ayrshire for the second time in six years. Their wait for top-flight football goes on and on. They finished here at Rugby Park on the day. Kilmarnock 4, Falkirk 0, 4-1 to Killy on aggregate. And so Kilmarnock survive, Falkirk fall at the final hurdle. After the match, the delighted Lee Clark spoke to our senior football reporter, Chris McLaughlin. When I become a manager, I take responsibility for the full club and I take responsibility not just in the footballing side, but the good people who work behind the scenes. And who knows what would have happened if I had went down to the championship and I didn't, I didn't want to be the manager that was around when, when those things happened. But what we do, we have to celebrate. Of course we have to, but we have to use that as a warning as well. Because the last three or four years, the club has been fighting this type of scenario for too long. So we use that as a warning, we recruit strongly over the summer and we try and copy the clubs of St Johnson, Ross County, Motherwell, those clubs who, you know, uh, they don't have the huge, huge, huge budgets in terms of the, the old firm and, you know, Hearts and Aberdeen, etc. But they're, they're very competitive and they're challenging at the right end of the table. So it's, it's being shown that it can be done and we have to try and emulate that. When you lose two goals in six minutes, the first six minutes, uh, give the impetus to Kilmarnock. Um, I think we're still involved up to the third goal. Uh, we gave the ball away ne uh, needlessly, uh, and they counter-attacked and scored against us. You know, but it, it, you know, I look at this, this Falkirk team. Well, last game of the season last year in the cup final. This year we got to the final of the playoffs. We fell a wee bit short on both occasions, but we have improved and we will get better. I couldn't ask for a better day to score two goals. To be honest. Um, it's just such a relief to, to get finally get out of the position that we were in. The way our luck was going, I was thinking after Thursday, I was like, is it actually going to be a year to survive? But after that performance today, it's been brilliant. It was a raucous day at Rugby Park. The Kilmarnock fans truly turned out in force. And in the end, celebrations in the sunshine, relief the dominant emotions. They vanquished Falkirk in some style to preserve their Premiership status. Tom English, you were there. Mm. Just how impressed were you by Kilmarnock? Well, fi finally they found something. You know, they found a clean sheet, they found a very dominant performance, they found ruthlessness, ruthlessness in front of goal. 
Uh, it took all season for them to find that performance, but they found it when they needed it most. I, I still think it's a bit weird seeing them celebrating in front of the sign that says winners. Should, should probably, probably say not losers, because there's a feeling of, of relief, I think, amongst the, the Killy support and players rather than any joy to celebrating a, a, a great triumph. Pat, as for Kilmarnock, in terms of today, they certainly came racing out of the blocks, didn't they? Uh, they did, and a lot got to do with the manager, how he set them up. Um, also, he allowed McGuinness out of the traps as well, which made a big, big difference as well. And there was a lot of pace and power that, in the end, Folk just couldn't live with. Yeah. And it was interesting to see that they, they do play the two wide players, you know, Obadiah and McGuinness wide. And he, he goes up here to his defender. It was a hard one for Lee today. And he just, just blasts by him. It's only a few yards. There's a nice little dummy in there as well. But if you look at it here, there's, there's a distance to go, there's a job to be done. But if you head to that byline, said the man from the Wingers Union, <laughs> and you get a cut back, it's, it's, a, it's a defender's nightmare. And they did that so often today, and they did it brilliantly. And Josh McGinn is such an important player for Kilmarnock. Comes into the team today, he was excellent. You know, he looks like a guy who's, who's, who's really focused on getting that team out of, out, of the, out of trouble at the bottom, and the Euros, he was a handful. Absolutely. Pat, in terms of the first leg, we saw issues with the Kilmarnock defending today. For the second Kilmarnock goal, issues with the Falker defending. Yeah, and Sybil, oddly enough, was involved with both of them. He found out the problem with defence uh, in the first one, but this time... Look him here, he's got two and one against him that he, he doesn't know what to do. He's done nothing wrong. It's a great ball in, mm. and it's a battle. Look at Sibyl saying, come on, help me. I need help. I don't want to be two and one. They're expecting a long throw. Craig Patterson mentioned it, but his mate's running away. He needs to be out there. You need to get two and two to make. When that cross comes in, it's not across exactly where you want it. If he comes out there, then that ball's not going to put in with that amount of power, with that amount of pace, with that amount of whip. And again, it's... As we've talked about it time and again in cup finals and playoffs. It's desire. It's the want of it. And they wanted it there, didn't they? They absolutely wanted it. And they wanted it for the first minute. I mean, you've got that sort of fan base and that sort of noise. And by the way, they kept a lot of Falkirk fans there as well. That seemed to lift the Kelly players as much as anything else. It kept on getting better for Kilmarnock as well, yeah. Tom. And mm -hmm. Greg Kilty, they seem to have a real star in the making. And Topi Obadai gets so much criticism, but he yeah, did well, deliver, well, didn't you he? You can hear Falkirk are two down. They have to try and make something happen. So they get caught on the break. And Obadai, you know, one week he's Mr. Magoo. Uh, here he's an absolutely dead eye accurate. Picks out Kilty. It's a goal, it's a knockout blow. Uh, Falkirk are on their knees it's at this it's point. It's hard for Falkirk because they've gone man to man here because they have to. There's no complaints about that. The problem is you go man to man. See if you get somebody who's got the pace that he's got. Hammer it in that area. Yeah. Once again, it's. The old biter here. Oh, no, it's gone in! We've done it again! Somersaults from Wilbox! Falkirk have scored in stoppage time! And it's advantage to the championship side. Welcome to Sports Scene, the Premiership Playoff Final, Round 2. Kilmarnock and Falk are grappling for a place in the top flight next season. Which side would land the knockout blow? Full highlights coming up, plus no holds barred punditry as well. With us in the studio tonight, Pat Nevin and Tom English. Later, we'll also look back at a memorable Scottish Cup final. But first, straight to Rugby Park. Falkirk 1-0 up from the first leg. The entire seasons of both sides about to be defined. Commentary comes from Craig Patterson and Liam McLeod. Well, Lee Clark has brought Josh McGuinness back into his starting lineup, having missed the first leg because of a hamstring problem. Will that be a risk? It's a big afternoon for 18-year-old Greg Taylor, who makes just his second start with Lee Hodson on his more natural right side. Peter Houston has gone slightly more pragmatic today with Tom Tywell recalled in place of the benched player Alston. That aside, it's a now familiar looking Falkirk team with Baird and McHugh continuing up front. Goalkeeper Danny Rogers plays his last game before returning to parent club Aberdeen. The referee's Willie Collum, who's off to this summer's European Championship finals after this. It's just his second visit of the season to Rugby Park. Seldom have the stakes been higher. Falkirk kickoff, shooting right to left in the dark navy, going towards the Moffat stand. Game number 1052 of the season across all of Scotland's domestic competitions. The final matter to be resolved, who will be team 12 in the Premiership and team 10 in the Championship.
first chance for Josh McGuinness in the channel. It's a good play by McGuinness. Big chance early on! And that massive goal early on as well from Greg Kilty! Two minutes in and Kilmarnock have wiped out the Falkirk advantage! Well, it's a dream start for Kilmarnock and Josh McGuinness back in the side and you can see why. He gets the ball, he goes at Leahy, he has got pace, he gets to near the byline, cuts it back, and Kilty one touch and then a drill into the back of the net. It's a great start for Kilmarnock and it's a really well worked goal. McGuinness plays his part, Kilty in the right place to finish. Falkirk scored late in the first leg, Kilmarnock scored early in the second leg, and it is 1-1 on the aggregate scoreline. What a positive start from the home team. Tybo. And for Blair Alston today, it was a big call from Peter Houston. He's Bob McHugh, he wins the free kick. The first chance for Paul Cook to put the Kelly defence under pressure. It's one of these areas where it'll take something special to beat the goalkeeper. Mark Kerr over the free kick. Half away by Ashcroft. Here's Volks. 